Do you think you're a hoarder? But you're probably not. At least compared to the Collier brothers. New York City, March 21st, 1947. An anonymous man called the 122nd Police Precinct, complaining of a smell emanating from the dilapidated old house at 2078 Fifth Avenue in Harlem. The smell of death. An officer was immediately dispatched, as they were already very familiar with this particular address. There were a lot of calls about this place. Homer Lusk Collier and Langley Wakeman Collier were born in 1881 and 1885, respectively. Once their father had graduated medical school, the family moved from their small apartment to the Brownstone at 2078 Fifth Avenue. Their parents separated in 1919, the Collier brothers, who had never lived alone or married, chose to stay with their mother in Grand Old 2078. In 1923, their father died, leaving them his collection of medical instruments and books. Six years later, their mother died as well. Homer continued to practice law, while Langley bought and sold pianos, as well as playing piano professionally, even performing in Carnegie Hall. Their lives were fully derailed in 1932 when Homer suffered a stroke, which resulted in total blindness. Oh, that's more skin. I regret this bit. Langley quit his job in order to take care of his older brother full time. This was the final straw that broke the hermit's back. From then on, they rarely, if ever, left their brownstone. missed. There was no response when the police knocked on the door of the imposing Harlem Brownstone and no doorbell, but there was definitely a smell. The windows were reinforced with iron bars and the entry was filled to the brim with junk. Countless bundles of old newspapers, boxes, chairs, all made the house incredibly difficult to enter. This was nothing new though. The Collier brothers didn't want to be bothered. When they noticed their neighbors attempting to see inside from the windows that faced their house, Langley bought the property with cash and left it vacant. But there was no sign of Langley today. Fucking hell. This is disgusting. I regret this bit. I've said it before. More officers were called to the scene to assist with clearing some avenue into the townhouse, and they began tossing junk into the street to gain access. Inside, they found more of the same junk, and in a small alcove filled with bundles of newspaper piled to the ceiling, the dead body of Homer Collier. He had died approximately 10 hours before, including the nearly five hours it had taken the police to reach his body. He had died of starvation and heart disease. But where was his brother Langley? Police, newspapers, and neighbors all suspected Langley Collier was both the anonymous tipster and the killer, as he was nowhere to be found. Rumors spread that he had boarded a bus to Atlantic City, possibly among other destinations. Despite a massive manhunt, the police turned up nothing. <clears throat> oh, there's gotta be a way to fucking eat some of this. Authorities removed more of the junk while crowds of up to 2,000 gathered to watch. After nearly three weeks of cleanup in a two-foot-wide tunnel made of dresser drawers, bundles of newspaper, and bedsprings, was the body of Langley just 10 feet from where his brother was discovered. His body was partially eaten by rats and stank of decay, likely the source of the smell that initially prompted the investigation. But how did he die? And how did it get this bad? With Homer Collier's vision gone, so too was the brother's entire income. He could no longer practice law, and Langley was fully occupied with booby-trapping their house, collecting junk, and taking care of Homer. In fact, since Homer's stroke, 
Langley alone had taken care of most of his brother's medical treatment due to their general aversion for the outdoors. Homer lived on a diet of 100 oranges a week, black bread, and peanut butter, all of which they believed would eventually cure his blindness. He eventually developed a rheumatism that left him completely paralyzed, but still he refused medical treatment. Langley continued caring for his brother, reading aloud to him, and playing the piano. Their eccentricities did not go unnoticed, however, and the New York Times falsely reported that they had turned down a substantial offer for their brownstone, purporting that they had amassed and hidden some enormous fortune in their home. This generated much unwanted attention, particularly from burglars. Langley responded with what he knew, engineering, and rigged elaborate systems of booby traps in and around the property, boarding up the windows and wiring the doors shut. The house quickly became a maze of complicated tunnel systems consisting of trip wires and other such Scooby-Doo type tomfoolery. It is believed that Langley, while going about his typical day of crawling through the makeshift tunnels while bringing food to his paralyzed brother, inadvertently tricked a booby trap of his own design and was crushed to death by the mountain of loose debris. And in the nest, amidst the newspapers next to his brother's corpse, under a vicious landslide of irony, Langley starved to death. The brothers are buried next to their parents in unmarked graves at Cypress Hill Cemetery, and the house, having gone for years without maintenance, was deemed a fire hazard and burned to the ground later that month. Police removed in total approximately 120 tons of junk from the Collier Mansion, including baby carriages, bicycles, a collection of guns, more than 25,000 books, human organs pickled in jars, 14 pianos, both grand and upright, a clavichord, two organs, banjos, violins, bugles, accordions, and countless other books, magazines, and newspapers. When alive, a reporter that somehow managed to ask this guy a question asked Langley why there were so many newspapers. Which Langley replied, I am saving newspapers for Homer, so that when he regains his sight, he can catch up on the news. <laughs>